Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Junaid Jahangir Awasi. And today I am going to tell you how to proceed a short case with a small head. You may be given a command of doing general physical examination and once you find that the head is small then you have to proceed according to the small head uh, parameters and the conditions which should be looked in a case of small head. First of all you need to do some journal observations. Uh, look whether the child is alert or lethargic, is he responding to the commands, uh, is he maintaining an eye contact, is he interested in the surroundings, in short is he a mentally retarded child or is, is he a well child with a normal IQ, you have to establish these things. Uh, then look for the dysmorphic features, uh, small head with dysmorphic features maybe Cornelia D. Lange, small head with dysmorphic features maybe Rubinstein, Ty B. Uh, small head with some hearing impairment uh, is indicative of torch infection, cerebral palsy, cocaine syndrome, neuroexonal dystrophy. A small head uh, with uh, glasses may be indicative of torch infection, cerebral palsy, DVD. Small head with skeletal anomalies may be indicative of uh, rhizomelia or rhizomelia chondrodysplasia punctata small head uh, with a hemiplegic posture is indicative of cerebral palsy and cocaine syndrome small head with a quadriplegia is indicative of cerebral palsy due to degenerative disease Small head with a decorticate posture is indicative of KB's disease. Small head uh, with some voluntary movements like a poor head control, like a um, poor tone is indicative of hypertonic cerebral palsy and neurodegenerative disease. Small head with Some involuntary movements uh, like choreothetosis, I think of cerebral palsy, phenylketone urea, um, Pelizius merbacha disease, small head with a myoclonus. Myoclonus, think of cerebral palsy, phenylketone urea, infantile seroid lipofuscinosis, Alpers, Icardi syndrome. Incontinentia pigmentae. Small head with some tremors is indicative of phenylketone urea, HIV related encephalopathy. Small head with a neurocutaneous stigmata. Think of incontinentia pigmentae. In incontinentia pigmentae, there will be a world world splashes of brown pigmentation on the skin so these were just some journal observations once you have done with them take the head circumference of the patient and with the parents plot it on the percentile chart take the height establish whether it, the child is also having short stature or not if there is short stature establish whether it is proportionate or disproportionate if the height is low, means that if there is short stature, establish the percentiles and the head circumference, the head, the head circumference percentiles and the height percentiles are equal, are same, or one is high and other is low. If both are same, think of syndromal diagnosis. Means if, if both are low, think of syndromal diagnosis, constitutional delay, endocrine disorder. If the height percentiles are Higher than the head, think of torch infection, Seckel syndrome, cocaine syndrome, or any severe encephalopathy in infancy. If the height percentiles are lower than the head, then the child is overall failure to thrive and he may be having some chronic illness. And if the child is having a disproportionate short stature, then definitely think of uh, chondrodysplasia punctata. Rhizomeric chondrodysplasia punctata. If the weight is also decreased, then consider the child as failure to thrive. 
after this go to the local examination of the head you have already taken the size now look at the shape of the skull and the shape should be described while the child is sitting up small head with an elongated epidermis think of sagittal synostosis before this also palpate for the sutures if the sutures are overriding then it's a case of craniosynostosis now small head with elevated epidermis elongated epidermis sagittal synostosis small head with high bald and wide coronal coronal synostosis small head with an asymmetry unilateral lambdoid synostosis small head with a narrow forehead and mid forehead ridge metopic synostosis small head with a tower shaped skull multiple synostosis small head with a sloping forehead autosomal recessive microcephaly <clears throat> then palpate the anterior fontanelle the anterior fontanelle is very important if, the, if there is small head with a wide anterior fontanelle think of um, congenital rubella and trisomies then come to the eyes in the eyes look for cataract nystagmus squint glaucoma corneal pastis visual acuity visual feel eye movements fund eye small head with microphthalmos think of torch infection small head with hypotelorism hypotelorism means that the distance between both eyes is small so small head with hypotelorism think of <clears throat> uh holoprosen cephaly and fetal alcohol syndrome small head with upward slant think of down syndrome small head with a downward slant think of trisomy 9 about trisomy 9 also remember that in trisomy 9 you may have a small head a small jaw cleft lip and cleft palate and a broad nose with a bulbous tip this these are findings of trisomy 9 <clears throat> small head with epicanthal folds think of trisomies small head with squint think of torch infections in cerebral palsy small head with nystagmus think of torch infections any other cause of visual visual impairment such as neurodegenerative disease so small head with squint uh, sorry with nystagmus can be neurodegenerative disease small head with corneal opacities cocaine syndrome congenital rubella herpes small head with glaucoma congenital rubella <clears throat> if assess the overall visual acuity if the visual acuity is impaired think of retinal causes or maybe optic pathway causes which can be seen in cerebral palsy small head with field of vision is impaired think of hemiplegic cerebral palsy look at the eye movements if the upward gaze is impaired think of hiv small head with anisocoria in pupils is indicative of congenital varicella small head uh, with cataract think of torch infections and incontinentia pigmenta then offer the examiner that i would like to have fundoscopy of this patient if he asks you why do you want to have fundoscopy say that small head is associated with some changes in the fund eye like if the patient is having choroiditis there is a chance of torch infection if there if the patient is having uh, if the patient is having pigmentary degeneration there may be neurodegenerative disease ceroid lipofuscinosis incontinentia pigmentae <clears throat> cocaine or torch if the patient is having optic atrophy he may have torch infection or krebs disease if the patient is having papillitis he may have incontinentia pigmentae once you have done with the general measures the head the eyes come to the nose small head with a saddle shaped nose 
think of syphilis. Small head with a prominent nose, think of cocaine and sackles. Small head with a midline groove in the nose, think of holoprosen carefully and hypopituitarism. <coughs> then the face. You have already done with the face dysmorphic features. Then the ears. Look for any hearing impairment. If small head with the hearing impairment, as I told earlier, torch infection, cocaine, or neuronal axonal neuroaxonal dystrophy. Then the neck. Small head with a goiter, think of hypothyroidism. Then the back. Small head with a scoliosis, think of neurodegenerative disease as well as cerebral palsy. Then small head must auscultate the heart. You may have PDA with rubella. Uh, you may have congenital heart disease with other trisomies. Then the abdomen, small head. Uh, in the abdomen, look for hepatosplenomegaly, which can be in the which can be associated with torch infection. Along with hepatosplenomegaly, look for umbilical, genital, or anal anomalies, which are found in other syndromes. Then go to the limbs, especially the hands. Small head with simian crease, think of Down syndrome. Look at the joints, small head with contractures, think of cerebro-oculofacial skeletal syndrome. Also look for proximal shortening, small head with proximal shortening, think of uh, rhizomelic chondrodysplasia punctata. Then you need to see the motor examination. The motor examination of both upper and lower limbs is very important in both uh, small head and large head. If you don't have time, just do the motor examination of the lower limb. Assess the tone power and the reflexes. Establish whether it is upper motor neuron lesion or it is a lower motor neuron lesion. Small head with upper motor, upper motor neuron lesion is indicative of cerebral palsy, torch infection or DVD. Small head with a lower motor neuron lesion is indicative of Krebs disease. Small head with cerebellar signs is indicative of uh, cerebral palsy and a neurodegenerative disease like Pelizius mobasher disease. Remember, it is also a neurodegenerative disease. After this, have a detailed developmental assessment of the patient. You must be able to determine what is the developmental age of the patient when you narrate your findings. Establish whether it is a gross motor delay or a fine motor delay. After all this, you should have a three main differential diagnosis. You need to edit your template according to the findings of your case, but overall three differential diagnosis must be kept in mind in any case of a small head. Number one, cerebral palsy. Number two, torch infection. And number three, a syndrome. Thank you so much.